The immune system is said to be adaptive because after the first encounter with a pathogen, it can develop a much faster response to repeat infection with the same pathogen. This adaptive response is important for vaccination and immunisation. Let's take a closer look at some graphs that illustrate this phenomenon. This graph shows the first encounter with a pathogen, which might be, for example, the chickenpox virus. If we chart the number of antibodies and leukocytes the body produces on the vertical axis over time on the horizontal axis, we can see that, after infection at time zero, it takes 10 days for antibody and leukocyte numbers to start increasing. This increase in production of antibodies and leukocytes lasts for just over 15 days. Now, let's take a look at the secondary adaptive immune response by plotting this on the same chart. This occurs with a repeat infection by the same pathogen. In our example, this would be a repeat contraction of the chickenpox virus. In this case, after infection at time zero, it takes less than five days for antibody and leukocyte numbers to start increasing. The production of antibodies and leukocytes lasts for over 30 days and it is a noticeably larger increase compared to the increase seen in our primary response. How is this possible? The cells of our immune system that are responsible for this phenomenon are known as B cells. B cells are designed to recognise only a specific pathogen, and so we have billions of them in our bodies. During a primary encounter with a pathogen, the B cell binds to the pathogen via receptors and eventually becomes activated. At this point, it starts dividing, producing copies of itself. Some of these new cells become plasma cells. This is the name given to the cells that function as antibody factories, producing antibodies that recognise the pathogen and flag it for destruction by other cells of the immune system. However, these plasma cells only live for a few days. In contrast, some of the clone cells become memory cells with a lifespan of decades. They circulate in the bloodstream, ready to produce antibodies much more quickly when they next encounter the same pathogen. It's the memory cells that produce the secondary immune response. Thanks to scientific experimentation, we now know that it's possible to deliberately administer a pathogen to generate an immunological memory by the production of memory B cells. It's this process that underlies vaccination and other forms of immunisation. Get more from The Open University. Check out the links on screen now.